I'm Mike Parenti, and welcome to iMusic. Yes, it's iMusic, a different kind of music video show. Coming to you on public access cable television. On this show, and the ones to follow, we'll be bringing you the best and worst of local bands from around LA, as well as interviews and music reviews. So stay tuned for iMusic. Our first video delight comes to us from Ivy, who is well known in the LA area as former leader of Ivy and the Eaters, and now with The Elegance. She started her career in San Francisco, where she recorded a single with Clover before Elvis Costello discovered them. She'll now perform Working Woman, which Ivy describes as a love song.
we present the Fizzies, a band out of LA's club scene with a refreshing, colorful, bubbly sound. According to them, the key word is on cute, with the emphasis on harmonies and melodies. So here, seeing their smash single, Do You Have a Minute, those four fabulous fun Fizzies. stars Paul McCartney it's a problem album though it's new he doesn't say much at all with it in fact this has got to go right away Gilligan love it and now the puppies with cat food dedicated to cats and food and grandmothers in the food store grandma shopping
Nice back cover at any rate, no hole in the red wedge. Okay, rock and roll. These guys don't fool around at all. Well, they don't fool around enough. Oh, Marsha Monteroyos. I can't pronounce that. Wait, maybe I can pronounce it. No. Huey Lewis. How old is this guy? 40? Ah, oh, shit. All right, Money Changes Everything, The Brains. Should have been the title song. It's the only song. Our next band have gained quite a following in their hometown of Monrovia, and they have a style that you can definitely call unique, if nothing else. So here for the first time on video are the Slammin' Salmon. It's a good one. I like this guy. And now it's time for Record Report with Charlie and Susie, who each show bring you what's new and exciting on vinyl. So here's Record Report. TVOD. TVOD. Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Record Report. Here we are in beautiful Manhattan Beach, our very own backyard. I'm Susie, and this is Charlie, and we've got a few records here for you to, to check out. First up. The League Unlimited Orchestra, better known as the Human League, and their new album, Ha Ha Ha, Love and Dancing. This, this album, I thought, was a bit disappointing because for, for a band who did as well with their first album, to put their second album out as a complete dance version of their first album, it's a little, you know, I thought it was a pretty uh, chicken thing to do. But, uh, and it's not really selling as well as the original. Um, therefore, therefore, I would pass on this if I were you. I'd buy the first one and then see what happens with their third album. Charlie, what do you think? I think you're being a little tough on these guys, Susie. Um, it's a 598 list. Isn't that right? It's 598? So it's a cheap so album. Well, anyway, it's a cheap album. Um, you know, it doesn't pretend to be anything more than what it is. It's, uh, and it's pleasing to the dancing crowd, you know. It's, that's what it's intended for. It's, it's not bad for what it is. Um, putting out dub versions of uh, albums and singles and so on is, uh, has become almost a, a tradition now. So you really can't uh, single out the Human League for doing it. Look at all the reggae bands that do it. Those are the people that started it. So, you know, basically, yeah, it is, it is what it is. It's a dub version of the Human League album, but it's useful for dancing, and it's inexpensive. And, uh, I mean, personally, I don't care for it, but I don't think on an objective basis it's that bad. <clears throat> okay. 
This is uh, called the new Bow Wow Al album. It's actually, they put out something called Your Cassette Pet, which uh, had all their, their original EMI recordings on it. Since they've, they've gone to RCA, the import has 16 tracks, uh, four which are new and 12 which were from the Cassette Pet. Whereas the domestic version of this will be basically the new, new cuts, a uh, few remix versions. So the bargain is in the uh, import. It's, um, <coughs> it's pretty typical Bow Wow Wow. If you've heard them once, you won't be surprised by anything on here. It's, uh, it's a good album, though. It's a good chronicle of their, of their past you know, three years. What do you think, Charlie? We have a match. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it's great. I like Bow Wow Wow a lot. In a way, they're a, they're a singles band, so as an album, it's, it's a kind of a bit too much. Uh, I mean, it's a great value. There's 16 songs on it. It's got all their hit singles and everything, and that's wonderful. But uh, like a lot of albums, the singles sound better singly than uh, than they do when you listen to 16 of them in a row by the same band. But yeah, it's great, and I like Bow Wow Wow. Okay, we have Captain Sensible's Happy Talk. Captain Sensible is, of course, the renowned guitar player for The Damned. Uh, this record, I couldn't believe it when I first heard it. It's, uh, geez, it's a 12-inch it's a import at the moment. It's available domestically as a 7-inch. It's a cover version of Happy Talk from the South Pacific, and it's, uh, it's fun the first time you hear it. it. It's so sweet that it's sickening, you know? It, uh, it gets on your nerves after you hear it enough times. It's so happy and fun that you, you start to think that you can't take it anymore. You need some depressing things, and you put on a Joy Division album or something like that. Charlie, unfortunately, likes this album, which makes it difficult when we live in the same house because I hear it all the time. And, it, you know, I end up blocking myself in the room and things like that. But uh, we, we must hear the reasons why Charlie likes this so much. Well... Okay, sure. First of all, oh, let's have a picture of Captain on the other side. He looks pretty cute. Can you get that? So you get the idea, right? That's the guy that made this record. No, it's good. Um, if it aggravates someone that much, there must be something good about it, in a way. Uh, also, it's just good. It's a good song. You remember it. It's easy to sing to. It's lots of fun. And it's funny, it's great. The singing is real good, especially uh, Dolly Mixture sings the backups. It's, it's really nice in tune and everything. It's the perfect Nelson Riddle 50s arrangement with uh, strings and trumpets with mutes on them and everything. Um, it's wonderful, it's great. And it's the number one single in England. Can't argue with success, huh, Susie? England is a very small country. <laughs> I burned his leg. The Go-Go's new album, neither one of us likes, so we don't feel it's, it's uh, fair to the band to review it at this time. My okay. <laughs> Which side do you like that? I think the black side. This is the new Kim Wilde album. This is an import only right now, but I'm sure it'll be released domestically soon. Um, it's it's called Select, and uh, it's newer than this than the album that's out and the and doing well in the states now. Um, this is a surprisingly good album uh, for someone who I expected to be kind of a vacuous uh, pop star, automatic pop star. Um, it really has it's good. She sings really well, and the songs are good. Uh, my only complaint about it is that it, I don't think it's well produced and there's kind of a, an excess of, uh, of uh, artificial synthesizer sounds kind of uh, in an attempt to sound trendy, I think, uh, or something. Uh, but it is kind of excessive, all the electronic drums and stuff. Something I don't object to in other albums uh, where it sounds good. But that's uh, otherwise, though, the songs are really good, and her singing is really good. And she's good looking, too. I prefer side one. Um, <clears throat> I, 
I don't, uh, I have always been a big fan of pop music. This album is a, is a good, it's a good example of how pop songs should be written. They're, uh, <coughs> they aren't sort of uh, cashing in on the success of Soft Cell a bit with the, with all those uh, synthesizer uh, dance beats, but the vocals and the lyrics and the and the, the hooks are all there, and it's uh, it's worth listening to. And uh, you'll get hooked. The more you listen to it, the more you like it. Definitely, she's she grows on you, this girl. All right, the generic album. <laughs> Flipper, Flipper. Probably many of you have never heard of and hope to never hear of again. They're um, they're a very obscure San Francisco comedy punk band. I would sort of classify them as it. They're very raw and hardcore sounding, but I think there's a, a great sense of humor involved in what they're doing. I mean, songs like Sex Bomb, it's outrageous and it's great. You know, you, you, get, you find yourself hooked and you don't want to be. You know, you're embarrassed about liking Flipper, but, but then again, you know, they, they sort of captured your heart. And the, the album cover is, is excellent, excellent idea. There are marketing t-shirts that say, shirt on the cover <laughs> generic so it's their the posters are posters i mean they, they definitely let you know what you're into you know there's no uh, qualms about it so I, I i could listen to sex bomb over and over i don't know about the rest of it though it's a little it does get on your nerves it's true how about your nerves <laughs> i find this album soothing actually um I, I like that's the way of the world. Uh, Flipper is great. I mean, they have great spirit, and uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen to them? Who cares? You know, but uh, uh, this album is is real cool. They can, they they're horrible. They play terribly, not totally terribly. They they can always get a nice rhythmic groove going. The songs are music. They have a musical feel to it, no matter how terrible they play. Um, Flipper was for a long time uh, was real uncool in San Francisco where they're from because they they were punks but they played slow and they played songs for 10 minutes and 20 minutes and, and jammed on the songs uh, uh, they call themselves the Grateful Dead of the 80s you know they look like skinheads uh, yeah uh, but it, it sort of gels it works out you know I like them a lot better than I ever liked the Grateful Dead I'll tell you uh, and they have nice real like chance, you know, uh, the music is like chance, and they're real hypnotic. Great band, I think. Okay. Pete Townsend. All the best cowboys have Chinese eyes. This is my personal favorite album of the year so far. It's the only album I've, I've got all year that I've listened to. You know, when I get home from work, I play this album. Because it's it's highly enlightening in that that Pete's sort of burying his soul now that he's he's cleaned himself up a little and and realized what his goal is in life um, it's much more interesting than any la any of the, the who albums in the last five or ten years um, <coughs> Pete's an amazing man he's a, he's a, a pizza man <laughs> he writes incredibly Good song. The lyrics, I think, are the standout on this album. He's toned down his guitar playing to uh, enhance the lyrics, just like the Roxy album again. It might be too personal for some people, including our friend Charlie. Yeah, well, this uh, Peter Townsend album, I just do not like it. I think uh, there was an interview with Elvis Costello and. Uh, in the paper last week by Robert Hilburn, and they mentioned uh, the Townsend album to him, and his reaction was, uh, "Isn't it pathetic to see these old rock stars prattling on about their problems and how they got saved and how they didn't get saved?" And I agree, you know, I'm I'm tired of it. Uh, I think he should go back in time and join the Bloomsbury Group or something. You know, it's. Uh, it's just not engaging. These songs, they're, they're self-pitying and they're, you know, and they're entirely too meaningful. Uh, no, I don't like it. I prefer the first three Who albums myself. 
There you go. Hey, I'm being sensible. <laughs> well, it's certainly been fun. And uh, that's it for uh, this record report, and we'll see you again next record report. And that's why you tune in, because most of you like that aloof sound we have. It makes this kind of sound like we're really cool or like we're really major tadpoles, if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, most of you will be right uh, if you vote either way. So uh, we'll be having some rock interviews later. You've been listening to 72 Hours of Salvador Dali Parton, Surrealistic Pillows. OK, Burning Spear. Now, reggae is something I can get into a lot. Well, that's it for this time. Hope you like the show. And if not, you can always watch Solid Gold. If you or your band would like to be on iMusic, or you have any questions or comments, or just plain hate mail, drop us a line. iMusic, 1765 North Highland Avenue, Box 999, Hollywood, California, 90028. I think that's it.